Okay. By contrast with the phrase, the other key term for groups of words acting together is a clause. A clause is a group of words acting together with both a subject and a verb. Phrases, if you remember, lack subjects and verbs. They don't have them. Clauses have subjects and verbs. The crowd cheered, which we started out the semester talking about, is a clause. Besides being a sentence, another thing we can say about it now is that it's a clause. Crowd is the subject. Cheered is the verb. It's a group of words acting together. It's a clause. It is a particular kind of clause, however. There are two basic types of clauses. There is an independent clause, which is a, it's another way, a fancier way of saying it's a complete sentence. It can stand on its own. It gets a period at the end. And then there's a dependent clause, which is part of a sentence. It cannot stand on its own. The crowd cheered is an independent clause, which again is just another way of saying it's a complete sentence. This terminology is important, by the way, because if you look in a grammar book or a, a grammar site online, they are going to talk about clause structures when they talk about punctuation. That's why we're going through all of this. The crowd cheered is an independent clause. If I put the word when in front of it, it's no longer an independent clause, but it still has a subject and a verb. It's still a group of words acting together. This is now a dependent clause. There, are a, there is a group of words that typically creates dependent clauses, that takes independent clauses and makes them dependent. We have them on the blackboard, well, the whiteboard over here. This is a group of words called subordinating conjunctions and relative pronouns. What's significant about this group of words is that it will take an independent clause and make it dependent. Um, understanding clause structure is really critical to understanding how to punctuate sentences. You have to know what you have in order to understand what punctuation to utilize. When the crowd cheered cannot take a period by itself because it's a dependent clause. It depends on another clause. To finish this, I would have to add an independent clause to it. When the crowd cheered, the man yelled his lungs out is another group of words acting as a unit, but it can stand by itself. It has man. It has yelled, so we know it's a clause by itself. This group of words is an independent clause. In analyzing this whole sentence now, what we would say is that this is a sentence with two clauses. The first one is dependent. The second one is independent. The man yelled his lungs out could stand by itself. It's an independent clause. The dependent clause cannot stand by itself. However, you notice that we could move the dependent clause to the end of this sentence. We could have the man yelled his lungs out. Um, when the crowd cheered can be either at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. The fact that you have a group of words that moves like that tells you that that group of words is working as an adverb, which takes us to the last distinction among dependent clauses. A dependent clause can be either an adjective clause, an adverbial clause, or a noun clause. Remember, these are parts of sentences. They're not whole sentences. When they are in a sentence, they're going to be either an adjective clause, an adverbial clause, or a noun clause. In this case, when the crowd cheered is a dependent clause that's also an adverbial clause. Uh, you can tell that because it can move. But
the moment when the crowd cheered was exciting, in which case when the crowd cheered is describing the moment. So in this sentence, when the crowd cheered would be an adjective clause. Again, it's the same principle that we saw when we were talking about phrases. On the blackboard, when the crowd cheered without anything after it, all you can tell is that it's a clause. It's a dependent clause. But when you see it in a sentence, it's going to be an adjective clause or an adverbial clause or a noun clause. We call things by what they do in a sentence. Adjective clauses will stick to the nouns that they talk about. Adverbial clauses will be much more flexible. They can go at the beginning of the sentence, in which case they take a comma, or they can be at the end of the sentence, in which case they don't take a comma. That basic principle that we looked at in our very first segment, when we were talking about the crowd cheered loudly versus loudly the crowd cheered, when the adverb loudly was at the beginning, we needed a comma. When it was at the end, we didn't need a comma. When the adverbial clause is at the beginning, we need a comma. When you put the adverbial clause at the end, you don't need a comma. All those basic rules apply to more complicated structures. Okay. okay.